Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Sometimes it seems like I spend my whole life in front of a camera. But then I realize that sometimes I just do things without the camera on. And I probably should have had it on. This is a 15 inch adjustable wrench. It's a 3580 by Industro Super. Nice wrench. Gives you plenty of leverage. I like how the handle tapers down. That way, fits into your hand well. Some of the big ones, it makes it so that you can't really get a good grip on it. This is about the right size to wrap your fingers all the way around without them hitting your palm. And you don't have your fingers out like this where you can't really get a grip on it. It's a good wrench. But, it was rusty. I had gotten it, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago, and it was always rusty. I only used it once in a blue moon, and it was out in the garage, and seldom came down anywhere near the shop downstairs. I was out in the garage picking things up and straightening up, and I noticed that this wrench was hanging on the wall. I thought, time I should clean that up. Well, not a big deal. All I did was just take the rust off, took the screw out, Cleaned it up, oiled it, made it work better. But it was while I was doing it that we're going to talk about. To clean the rust off of this, I didn't need to do a whole lot. It just had a little bit of surface rust on it, nothing major. Didn't need to go with electrolysis or acid wash or anything else. Just wire brushed it. So I used this wire wheel on the Foley Bell Saw. And the Foley Bell Saw is a very nice grinder. It does 3600 RPM. It's quite nice for running a wire wheel. It, it does a good job. And this wire wheel that I got from Roger up at Heritage Company does a great job on polishing things up. It, it makes it feel just nice and smooth. Now I, I don't normally polish things if I'm just cleaning them up. I leave that work to Scout Crafter. I have more bring them back into good working condition. And this one's been gone through a couple of times already. I can see where somebody ground on the jaws where they pounded on it, but that was long before I got it. All I needed to do was take the rust off. Well, as I was brushing, I got finished with the last of it, and then as the grinder was just sitting here running for a second, it started pouring smoke out of it. Well, I quickly shut it off, but it was smoking quite heavily. So I quickly unplugged it, pulled the cover off of it, looked inside and one of the coils was burnt. It's all unplugged. The starting winding down here overheated and it's not like it, it hung up or had a problem but it just overheated. Now I've just kind of splice those two together with a half a twist. I'm going to show you something. Well, that's good.
82 degrees. Ambient in the room is about 63. temperature seems to be climbing slightly. It's up to one hundred and one. One hundred and one isn't bad. Finding that overheated is running about 98 degrees. Things are up to 106 degrees Fahrenheit. 100 on this side. This side's running about six degrees hotter. Staying cool, right around room temp. Well, I'm hoping that my little grinder here is still in good condition. Uh, Doesn't feel hot. And checking it with the thermometer, it was only running about 106. Now this isn't a fan-cooled motor. Uh, that might have some impact on it. This is just a convection cooling. It's got holes in the bottom of the housing here. And it lets air flow up through. But if air can get up in here but not out, perhaps there's some issue there. Don't know. Hopefully, hopefully the motor's gonna work. If I was a motor rebuilder instead of a household electrician, industrial electrician, I might be able to do something with this, but I don't wanna learn that skill now. If the motor does fail, then it's toast, but I have a spare. I'm also thinking that this is a pretty common style motor. Uh, Foley Bell Saw used a motor that was common for Sears grinders. Sears benchtop grinder, same frame. So 
hopefully the winding's gonna be all right. I got I got the uh, cover off and got everything cooled off and checked everything out and it, it looks to be okay. Well, we'll just have to give it a try and see what happens. Gonna use the grinder. Hopefully, whatever happened to it before won't repeat itself. On a side note, there's a rumor going around that YouTube is gonna cancel using comments. That's really gonna put a crimp in the whole idea of having this workshop because you guys talking to me about what you want and what you think, that's the whole point and purpose of doing this. If YouTube cuts out the comments, it's just gonna be me up here talking to a camera. No more interaction. Now, I'm told that some people think that, well, you know, we'll just use Facebook. We can uh, put the comments in Facebook or Twitter or, you know, some other medium and put it on there and then that way we'll still have the interaction. Yeah. And if they succeed in getting the comments off of YouTube because they're afraid that somebody might say something incorrect, how long do you think it's going to take before Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Bit, Shoot, whatever they use, is going to have to toe the line too? I think this is a bad idea. YouTube should keep the comments. I can police my comments. Somebody says something that's not right, I get a notification every time there's a comment. Now, I don't have that many comments. I don't have the millions of viewers that some people do. But if you're gonna have millions of viewers, I suppose you got a responsibility to take care of what's going on on your channel. Comments actually has a little thing in there that says, if somebody says something you don't like, you can pick out any word or phrase and say, can't be said on a comment. If they do that, it doesn't block it, it throws it over into a file and says, take a look at this before we post it. I have a few that do that. Sometimes it's just innocuous. You say a phrase that uh, is close and YouTube says, well, okay, we'll put it over in a file and Dave can look at it. And I do. If YouTube can't figure out how to do it any better than, than saying, okay, we're just gonna block comments, Old Sneelock's workshop is going to shrivel up and die. And I don't want to see that happen. And I hope you don't either. So if you have anybody to talk to about it, tell them. Let's make some noise. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.